And joining us now from Washington is Steve Shigaris, CBS News senior political editor. Steve, uh, so where should the White House go on this? Clearly there's a blurring of the line here with Nunes and so many people, even Senator John McCain has come out saying we don't even think Congress can investigate this. Where should they go from there, from here? Well, I, who, it's far from me to suggest to the White House what they should do, but I mean, just given what they've done on everything so far, they've sort of followed where their base takes them. And, and, and Trump's base and the Republicans do not believe uh, that uh, that that Russia meddled uh, in uh, in the election. They don't believe that uh, Trump um, and his associates uh, had any connection to uh, to Russia. So uh, you know, if they're listening to the people who who elected them, uh, at least the base, then they're not going to really, you know, I think, go too uh, too hard on this uh, on this Russia investigation. Why why get involved with that if uh, if this is the mo that the Trump administration has been using really since uh, uh, he became president? Uh, Steve, I'm sure you paid attention to that uh, briefing. Major pressed Spicer over and over again. Uh, the White House is stalling on details about Nunes' visit to the White House grounds. Why is this information important, and what do the lack of details signal going forward? Well, it's important because we need, we know, we want to know, and and I think others want to know on Capitol Hill, uh, is uh, Nunes compromised uh, by going to the White House by uh, giving. President Trump uh, a briefing on what he had learned in that meeting uh, before he actually briefed his fellow uh, members of the Intelligence Committee. Uh, does that compromise him as chairman of the committee in terms of investigating uh, this Russia issue? That's the big question. Without all those details, we don't really know uh, all that. Um, but in terms of uh, where the lack of details uh, signal, I mean, I, you know, part of this is, let's keep in mind, this has been a White House that has not been very clear in terms of communicating anything, frankly, uh, whether it's uh, during the transition uh, or throughout the beginnings of this administration. Uh, they've had a, a hard time uh, communicating things. And so I think part of that is, uh, as I described it the other day on CBSN, it's sort of a Keystone Cops aspect of, of uh, this White House. It's just really chaotic. Uh, and I don't think maybe they don't have all the details. I know they could probably get the details pretty easily, but at the same time, uh, they also don't feel the need to cooperate with what uh, everybody is demanding from them, whether it's the public, uh, whether it's the media, especially if it's the media, or whether it's Democrats on Capitol Hill. And I think you're seeing a bit of resistance from the White House to cooperate with those uh, with those questions. And we just want to remind everyone who's watching, we expect to send an Intel press conference later this afternoon. Maybe some more answers there, Steve. I want to move on to health care, though. A CBS News poll found that 49 percent of Americans believe the GOP health care bill failed simply because it wasn't popular. Only 14 percent blamed either party or the president. What do you think the signals about how health care reform can proceed, Steve? Well, it's a signal, first of all. I know we spent a lot of time talking about uh, the House Freedom Caucus and Republican moderates and how they sank this bill. But I think it does sort of underscore uh, how uh, the bill just did not, uh, was not written in a, in a way that could appeal to enough people uh, in Congress, in the House. And I think that's one thing we didn't talk enough about uh, in the immediate aftermath of why this bill didn't make it to the floor of the House. I think uh, Paul Ryan, who was spearheading the writing of this bill, just was not able to explain it to Republican members of the House as to why it's important to vote for this. And then when she started digging into it, whether it was with the CBO report uh, that showed some pretty highly negative numbers that would have been involved with this bill passed um, uh, and became law, uh, or uh, just in general, uh, whether moderates or conservatives just didn't agree with some of the aspects and proposals in this bill, uh, it just seemed like the bill itself uh, was not uh, was not really something that was palatable to most Republicans. So moving forward, if uh, the president and Republicans can come up with something that is a lot easier to understand, a lot um, easier for Republicans to then, if they cast a vote on this, can take home to their constituents and say, here's why, what I voted for and why I voted for it, uh, then perhaps they might be able to, uh, to pass something. All right, Steve Shigaris in Washington. Steve, thank you and always good to see you. Thanks. Great to see you.